Hello friends and potential friends. Well, let's see. Today is the 25th of February 2022. It's just past 11 o'clock in the morning and it's just past 82 degrees here in Central Florida. At least along the coast. It's probably warmer in farther inland. I figured I'd start out with my green stalks this morning. This first one we're looking at is going to be my strawberry tower. And as you can see, there are strawberries growing all around the top. And I've got a few that are planted down lower in the tower. Those are from runners that I've already pulled off. And I have more runners coming on. I'm trying to get these two rooted in these little yogurt cups so that I can move them down somewhere else in the tower. And I've got one over here that has rooted itself. That was a replacement for a plant that didn't make it. But it's rooted and it's sending out its own runners now. The next tower over, well, I started another tater tower. Cuttings have been in here for almost a week. And I'm starting to see a little bit of sprouts here and there. There's a tiny one there. I think I saw one down by the marigolds over here. Yep, back there in the back. Nasturtiums that are doing okay. And I planted more nasturtiums and uh, marigolds around the bottom tier. There's another sprout coming up, so should have tater greens pretty soon. Speaking of greens, the salad tower is still going pretty strong. Some of these are starting to get bitter, but for the most part, I can still pick a salad out of here whenever I want. And I planted another round of lettuce seeds, so I'll have another batch of salad coming on before too long. Cabbage at the top. Well, they're trying to form heads. I've been picking leaves off of those for my salads, but they're not doing too terrible. Not any real solid heads forming, but I'm still getting salads out of the deal. And the mint down at the bottom recovered. It's been battling it out with the morning glories all winter, and it looks like they've come to a draw this year. I thought that mint was actually going to die off after we had that freeze, but it came back as mint seemed to do now yeah, let's go back and see what's going on in the backyard get away from the traffic a little bit well let's stop in the lab and I'll show you my current dilemma over here in the sweet potato slips I gotta get these things in the ground pretty soon they're vining all over the place in here I didn't get as many slips as I really wanted but that's okay because over here in the sweet potatoes that I grew from seed, I got a bunch of them. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, almost 24. And as you can see, these ones over here, they're vining all over the place as well. So they have to get in the ground pretty soon. And in amongst the sweet potato experiment, yeah, I still have my little bonsai rosemary. I'm giving it a rest from clipping right now. It's getting to be more of a globe, but I'm going to let some of these branches grow out just a little bit more so I can kind of fill it in a little bit better. That's going to be a slow process. You may be watching that for the next year or two. Tomatoes? Well, let's see. There's six homestead tomatoes that I separated out into yogurt cups. And there's a Lebanon Amish paste. I still have, oh, there's about four or five more homesteads that need to be separated and eight or nine Amish paste that need to be separated and a whole bunch of Praxis cherries that need to be separated and back in the back those are Everglades, Everglades tomatoes from the first planting I didn't plant any of that second batch of seeds that Cindy sent me but I had a second flush and it looks like there's probably a dozen seedlings in there that need to be separated now I've already got four separated right here and a half dozen Praxis cherries. There's my dragon fruit. Still not growing. Still haven't figured out how to make them happy. The ginger from seed. I've said time and again I don't really expect to get anything out of that because I'm not sure if any of those seeds I planted were viable. I don't know much about ginger seeds so but I'm leaving them in here and we'll just see what happens. Here I've got four more homestead tomatoes. And then there's eight more Amish paste over there at the side. And those sweet potatoes have to go outside soon. 
This afternoon I'll be separating out more of these up into yogurt cups, but before I do that I've got to up pot some of them. I think those homesteads need to go in six inch pots. The Amish paste definitely need to be up potted. So that's what I've set up to start doing back here. And as I clear space out of the yogurt cups, I'll be taking some of these tomatoes and moving them into yogurt cups. And the sad part is I need to get a lot of this stuff outside because I haven't even planted any pepper seeds yet. I'm going with my old tried and true staples this year for peppers. I want to try to get a lot of bell peppers, probably a lot of red marconis, other sweet peppers, and just a handful of the hot peppers this year because I'm a little bit short on space out in the main garden beds too. But that's where I'm at in the lab. It's filled up fast. It doesn't take long once I start planting seeds. But now I need to make room in here so I can plant more seeds. And let's see, out here in the container garden, I did finally plant ginger and turmeric last week. None of them are coming up yet, but it'll probably be a little while longer. Has to get quite a bit warmer at night, I think. We don't have no problems getting warm during the day. We've been in the 80s, low 80s for the last week. It's supposed to be a cold front coming through sometime this weekend. Well, cool front. We'll call it a cool front because they're already saying we'll be back in the 80s early next week. Looks like spring has sprung around here. But the ginger and turmeric will be coming up before too long. I did put a few extra cuttings of potatoes in this bed here just because I had them. And oh, looks like I got some starting to sprout already. Can you see that one there? Don't see any other sprouts right up. Well, there's a couple over there at the far side. But, so they'll be popping up pretty soon. The rest of this is probably going to become a pepper bed if I don't fill it up with tomatoes. Still got pineapples going in containers. And there's my big boy, but lately it's been browning a little bit. I think it might be using up the nutrients in that pot. So I need to figure out where to either move it into the ground somewhere or find a bigger pot to put it in. I do still have a few tomatoes going up here in these containers. And they're still trying to produce fruit. They still have some blossoms on them. They actually stopped blooming when it got cold. And then they started blooming again when it warmed up again. Kohlrabi over here is not doing well. I think I've mentioned it probably doesn't get enough sunlight here. The eggplants are, they're growing okay. Had a little bit of pest pressure on them, but they're continuing to grow. And it looks like they kind of like the warmer weather. There's my elderberry. Still looks the same as always. And I still got plenty of aloe. Still have my gardening buddy over here. Yep. There's licorice. Yeah, he's gardening the rosemary. <laughs> I moved the rosemary over here to make a little more clearing through here so I could see some of the other beds. Oh, and this is a new addition. I finally received a couple more of my Vigo Gardens beds. They call these uh, herb beds, but in my opinion, they're too small for herbs. They're, I think they're 24 inches square, basically. So I stuck the pineapple in each one of them. Got two of them here and still have some more pineapples out there let's see my lettuce back here or cabbage is still doing okay again we're not getting any heads but that kohlrabi over there seems to be forming a bulb finally it's been getting a lot of sunlight right here and it tends to droop every day but seems to be growing good elephant garlic down here is doing good and the space in the middle here is kind of reserved for peppers when i get them going over here in the winter tomato bed well i got tomatoes and they're still trying to produce more got lots of aromas that i need to pick over here scattered all through there they're a little bit worse for wear because hey they had a hard winter but now they're going crazy again let's walk around to this side you can see the mule teams are still trying to put on fruit and we got one here that looks like it needs to come off Yep, I'm going to have to take that one off. There's a few Praxis cherry tomatoes. That one looks like a snack. Mmm, love those things. This one is a Ponderosa. And that one there 
Here's another ponderosa. Destined to be a BLT, I think. Y'all ready for another BLT video? I think I am. Let's see, the other tomatoes I got over here. Been getting a lot of blossoms the last few days. So they want to produce more fruit. That's the red brandy wine. There's also some Abe Lincolns in here. My volunteer cilantro is starting to bolt, but that's okay. I got a little bit of free cilantro off of it this winter. These two mangoes are not doing well at all. And there's another red brandy wine. The plant itself looks pretty pitiful, but still giving me tomatoes. And the Brad's Atomic Grapes, they have finally started to ripen a little bit. I got to eat a couple of them yesterday, and boy, they do taste good. They take a long time to produce and ripen, but I think they're worth the wait. And incidentally, my theory about the stink bugs not liking the purple tomatoes, that has been proven false. Because yesterday I found three stink bugs on one of these Brad's Atomic Grape tomatoes. <sighs> Needless to say, they're no longer with us. But there's another theory down the drain. Let's see, the eggplants on this side, they're not growing as tall as the ones in that other bed. But they seem to be a bit more healthy. And the kohlrabi over here, I got one of them that's forming a nice bulb. Now this is the first time I've grown kohlrabi, so I don't really know what I'm looking at or what to expect. But I think that's what I'm supposed to be seeing. The kale and the collards over here. Well, the kale's been shaded out by the kohlrabi quite a bit, and by the collards. I've been pulling leaves off the collards and making salads and wraps out of them, trying to use them up, but they're staying ahead of me. Let's see, the patient's garden. As you may be able to see, a lot of these asparagus ferns are turning yellow on me finally. So today or tomorrow, I'm going to take this cage off of here and get another good layer of mulch over top of them after I get the weeds out of it. Let's see, my onion bed. The onions grew real slow during the winter, but as soon as it warmed up, they started popping. There were a couple of them that never came up, and I replaced those with a batch of uh, carrot seeds the other day. So we'll see if I get any carrots in here as well. And the radishes down at this end, there's probably quite a few of them that I could pick right now. There's a little tiny one. I'm looking for these watermelon radishes to start forming because I kind of like the watermelon radishes. But they haven't been doing too good this year. Some of the others, these are the sparkler white, white tip radish. There's a few in there, they're probably getting close. I've already got some in the refrigerator, so I don't really need to pick these right now. And then down here at the end, I've got to put in a row of purple top turnips. And if I remember right, yeah, can you see that down in there? I finally got a bulb popping up there. There's another one next to it. So I'll get a few turnips out of the deal before long. Now the, lo the one last dilemma that I've got, I've got this bed that I still need to put about two or three more inches of compost on top of. That's where I was planning on planting my uh, sweet potato slips. But because I have so many seedlings and so few slips, I decided I'm going to move the seedlings into this one. So that's where my sweet potato experiment is going to finish out. And that's also going to pretty much fill up the rest of my beds out here. But I've got plans for that too. You see, I ordered two more of these 4x8 Vigo Garden beds. And they're going to be going right out there right at the end of each of these that I've got set up already. So I've got a lot more clearing to do, and that china berry tree needs to go. So it's gonna take me a little bit, but I'm gonna be expanding the garden, two more beds, and sadly, all that is gonna do is get me back to the point I was before I took the original beds apart. Remember, each of those was 16 foot by four foot. Well, one of them was only three foot, and I replaced them with four beds that are four foot by eight foot. So I'm missing missing another 16 feet of beds to plant in. And that's what the next two beds are gonna do for me, get me back to where I should be. And Licorice wants some more attention. So, and Pally just walked off. You see Pally out there? I haven't introduced him yet, have I? That's Pally. If you have a better name for him, let me know. I named him Pally as, because he's kind of a Palomino color. And he's going out there talking to Snowflake. 
I haven't told you about Snowflake yet either, have I? Okay, I gotta shut this off and go talk to Pally a little bit. He's not supposed to be harassing the kittens. But anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. I'm dripping profusely and I'm gonna go talk to Snowflake and Pally and I'll see you next time.